Hello, and welcome to the end of my first quarter century of living. Thank you, thank you very much. I'd now like to officially announce the end of my quarter life crisis. Just kidding, think that's still in full swing. <laughs> January 31st, I turned 26. But I thought it would be a good time to do a little wrap up and talk about what going through a very hard year has taught me about art. Because, you know, it's an art channel, so everything has to relate to art. But it actually does. Also, if you're going to go through a hard year, you better learn something from it, because otherwise, like, what was the point? Thank you for all of your patience throughout this year as I've been spotty with uploads. The channel has continued to grow though and I'm so appreciative of all your guys' support. An extra big thank you to my Patreon supporters and this month's winners of our challenge. Check them out. So cool. I'll see you guys after this video. So it's true. Just as intro Robin said, I am 26. People on this channel used to comment all the time how I look 16, but I feel like I've aged a lot this year, so I wouldn't be so surprised if I look my age now. I mean, if not, that's definitely cool too. The passing of another year in my life has put me in a reflective mood, so I thought I'd share some things that I took away from this year. Mainly though, I want to focus on how the changes that took in my life over the last year have affected my art. As some of you have been following my channel or social media accounts for a while have seen, this has been a pretty turbulent year for me. A lot has changed. I spent my 25th birthday living in my mom's house in New York, renting her basement. At the time, it was at the beginning of a major transition in my belief system. Since then, I drove across country, moved to Utah, entered a big period of questioning the way I see the world. I moved back to New York for a couple months and then back to Utah again. Since I originally moved to Utah nine months ago, I've met a lot of new people, had a ton of new experiences, thought different thoughts and felt different things than I've ever felt. It's been a combination of good and bad. Honestly, a lot has been super painful. Going through all the changes I have mentally, emotionally, in my relationships with others and with myself, my art has been very impacted. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. When my dad died in 2013, my brain shifted in a big way. It started a shift that I'm still navigating now. I don't know all the reasons why, but I am lucky to have a sneak peek into my subconscious to know that that shift even took place. Because when he died, my art changed. I stopped painting the tight, hyper-realistic portraits I've been making for years, and instead, water came into my art. Likewise, this year, as a million changes have taken place in my brain and in my personal life, Changes have come to my art. In 2013, I really internalized the advice I received from the artist Royal Nebuchadnezzar, that you should paint whatever is most pressing on your mind. At the time, that was death. So I painted water to symbolize my dueling perspectives on death, whether it be calm and healing or mysterious, dark, threatening. Then in 2014, what pressed my mind was longing for a sense of home. So I painted the landscape around me where I lived. Whether it was Utah and I painted the sky and mountains, or when I moved to New York and it was waves. As this year went on though, what pressed on my mind changed. Themes I'd attached to, like death and then home, faded and were replaced by an overwhelming feeling I had of being lost. When my religious beliefs shattered, so did my sense of security. It was a process that took place slowly over years, and then all at once, when my shell finally broke. And when it happened, I was left to try to reassemble my worldview, and this is when my experimental period began in art. Experimentation began to work its way into my practice. I started using my sketchbook more regularly as a safe place to make art that wasn't my real art. Just what I was trying out at the time. But slowly my experiments became the main bulk of what I made. Eventually, an only only recently did I fully accept that this was a necessary phase of my journey in art, and that started to set me free. Instead of trying to excuse my less than perfect sketchbook experiments and disqualify the importance of them in my practice, I can recognize just how important they are, how much they relate to my current phase in life, how much experimental art at a very shifting time in my life falls perfectly into the vice I got in 2013, to make art about what's most pressing on my mind. And what idea is pressing on my mind? Searching. 
Accepting that I need to experiment and make some art that I'm not completely proud of in order to arrive where I want to ultimately. It's allowing me to relax, make mistakes, and take time to learn. I grew up looking at myself and my art similarly. I've always been a little uptight when it came to proving myself and wanting to be good. I've tried very hard to be a people pleaser. Outside validation matters to me. Whether it's a teacher or my mom or a classmate, I loved what making something technically or traditionally good did for my sense of a accomplishment and for my sense of self. And I loved the way I felt that it made others see me. Here's a lesson I've been learning though. Trying to maintain an image of perfection by only playing to my strengths and never allowing myself to try new things or make mistakes keeps me from learning lessons that will allow me to evolve as an artist. And by pushing off learning those lessons, I only delay my ability to grow and make it harder to achieve my goals. Ultimately, I, I want to be good. I want to work hard. I want to make a ton of art that I'm really proud of. I I want to make things that other people will like and be proud of me for. I still want all those things, but I also recognize the needful steps that come before arriving at making really good art. The needful steps I see are mistakes, exploration, discovery, practice, and some bad art. When you're working to find your style as an artist, you have to go through a very important process. Making a ton of art, playing out a ton of ideas, practicing, improving. Finding your art style doesn't happen just once. You'll go through different shifts in your life that will inform the kind of art you want to make. Your priorities and goals will evolve and change. When you feel those shifts, it's important to allow yourself freedom to explore because the sooner you self-accept and begin that process, the less friction you'll pit against your own growth. So I say lean into it. Give yourself time. Accept that you need to practice. Accept that you need to try new things in order to make something that's really good in the end. If you never explore your ideas or challenge yourself or try anything new, how are you supposed to ever make progress? And honestly, I think it's by exploring these things, the human condition, our own fears of our imperfection, that we're able to start making art that has a message that's really worth sharing or that just speaks to people or really is something you can be proud of. I mean, how can you know that you really love what you're making unless you've made stuff that you hate, unless you've messed up and gone down roads that you found aren't for you? I think for me this year is a big year about learning. And what's been incredible to see is that as I've been doing these experimentations with my artwork, maybe I'll make something that has nothing to do with where I want to end up. And maybe I won't even like it. Maybe no one else will like it. But by trying all these different things, I've been able to pivot and move and grow and ultimately I'm starting to see how it's working together. And I recognize too that I don't know a lot of the ways it's working together. But what's really important to me right now is that I'm learning to enjoy the process of making again. And by not being so focused on the product and actually being able to enjoy making artwork, I'm really putting the spark back into my love for art. And ultimately I think that's gonna make me a more passionate, more driven, better artist. So I'm excited to see where all my mistakes leave me. And I get to be grateful for the process of all of this, and not just wherever it arrives at. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like, a comment, subscribe, new videos every Friday, share the video, what have you. If you want to take a look at our Patreon, you can check out the different perks and challenges we have going on over there in the link below, and also in the end screen, I will leave a link. Go make some freaking art this week, and I will see you guys next Friday.